when it comes to building a rig for the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, there are loads of different routes that you can go down, um, and there are loads of different rig types. So, for example, we have a shoulder rig, we have a handheld with two handles, we can have a low slung with a top handle, or we can have a sort of chest height rig. Now, all of the rigs will require a solid base, so we're going to get started with the small rig 2203B. This costs about £73 and weighs about 300 grams. Now it's really important to think about weight when building a rig, not only because obviously you've got to be able to actually hold the whole rig itself, but you've also got to bear in mind the weight capacity of things like tripods, gimbals and stabilisers, should you want to use them. Putting the camera into the cage is easy. All we're going to do is just slide it in from the back until it lines up with the top pole. We'll tighten this up. And you can give it a little bit of a shake just to make sure it's sitting in there correctly. Once you've tightened that, we will flip it over carefully and we'll add the bottom screw. This one has uh, basically another quarter inch screw but with two locating pegs either side. And it slots into this custom shaped slot at the top. So we'll pop that in and again tighten it. Now before we turn it over we're going to add a quick release plate and that's so that we can mount it to either a rail system or onto a tripod. Now the camera in front of me is on a Manfrotto tripod and that uses a 501 plate. And as it happens, small rig do their own base plate with a Manfrotto 501 PL plate. The first thing we'll do is we've got a lock lever here, we're just going to put that to unlock. And the second lever here, this black one, we're going to hold down and slide the plate out. We'll put the base plate aside for now. On the quick release plate we have a 3 8 screw and a quarter inch and those match up with the two holes here in the centre. So we'll just screw them on. Because they have slots in you'll need either a screwdriver or I'm just going to use an old knife because that's what I have lying around in the studio. So we'll just tighten it up. It's really important to make sure this is completely straight otherwise your camera will obviously be off kilter and that's very important when it comes to putting on the lens. So now that we've got that on we can flip it back over to the right way and the next step is to put on the SSD. So this is a small rig 2245B so we're just going to pop this on the top on this special area up here which it's designed for. Again make sure it's nice and tight then we can pop in the SSD, this is the Samsung T5 which is designed to go with this mount. This is the 2TB version so we've got plenty of storage. All we need to do is just tighten it up, not too much, just enough to keep it nice and secure. And then we can put in the supplied USB-C to USB-C cable. One end goes in the SSD. Then what I'm going to do to give us a bit of cable management, I'm just going to wrap it around the SSD and pull it inside of the camera. To open the rubber flaps on the side you probably need some sort of knife and to be honest a lot of people remove them because they kind of are very difficult to get into. The next stage is to add a handle. Now I went with the PRL MC which is basically two of these rosette handles. And these both have quarter inch threads and two locating pins. However unfortunately on the cage we have three eighths holes and locating pins. So we need to change the three eighths into quarter inch. There's a hole on the top, there's one up here on the right hand side and there's one there on the left hand side. So I've just got some reducer bushings, 3 eighths to quarter inch from Amazon, about £7 for 10 and we'll just slide one into each of the three sockets. Now because I'm going to put a very heavy lens on the front, what I'm actually going to do is turn the handle to face the lens. And I'm going to keep the L shaped bracket towards the screen side. And that means it just gives a better centre of gravity. And if you want you can stick a small and key in the hole, just to help tighten it, like so. So that's our basic starting point for all of the rigs basically. So I'm going to put this to one side for now. Now we can talk about batteries. On the Blackmagic Pocket 4K the internal battery is the LP-E6 which is tiny, not much bigger than a DSLR battery. So it's only going to last us for probably about 20 minutes when we're recording in 4K. 
Now you can just have tons of these batteries and stick them on your bag and you've got, you know, a nice lightweight setup for going on holiday or travelling with. But if you want to have longer recordings for like documentaries or when you're out in the field and you want to do a time lapse, then you're going to need something more powerful. Here I've got some SWIT S8975 batteries. These are MPF batteries. These are 75 watt hours, so by my calculations, each one should probably last about two and a half hours ish. So that gives us five hours of continuous recording. Of course, you can get bigger batteries, but I found this is a nice balance between capacity and size. You can also get V mount batteries which screw directly onto the bottom of the camera, but I find them too bulky and too expensive. The other reason I went for the Sony FPF batteries is that I have a lot of accessories that use the batteries. That includes the LED light on top of the camera, the LED light behind me, and also, as it happens, the reference monitor which we will be using later on. Now because these batteries weigh quite a lot, they're about 334 grams each. I don't really want to add this weight to the already heavy lens that I'm going to put on the front of the camera. So I came up with a better solution, or what I think is a better solution. Here we have a small rig 2990 which is a belt clip. Um, so that can just clip on your belt as it happens. Um, and on the back it's got a V mount. Now obviously we're not using V mount batteries, we're using MPF, so we need an adapter plate. So here's the head box HBP MPF. And on the back it's got a V mount lock. So all we need to do is marry the two up. And now we have something that we can attach the batteries to. And we can attach that to our belt. And to help give us the range of movement that we need, I have the Core SWX power cable, which has a P-tap or D-tap, as you can see, to two pin, which is the standard connection to a Blackmagic. So all we need to do is to pop it in the battery plate. And then that can go directly in the camera. And the reason I went for this one is that it's coiled, which means it can stretch and retract um, to whatever length we need, basically. So it's a really versatile little setup, um, which is why I think it'll be good for a lot of people. The only thing to be wary of, though, is that these batteries aren't fully compatible with this battery plate. What I mean by that is that they don't fully lock into place. The sockets in these batteries aren't quite deep enough to fully sit the pins in, so it doesn't quite clear the locking mechanism, unfortunately. But if you're worried about dropping your batteries, then to be honest, you can probably just stick a bit of blue tack in behind them, and that'll keep them nice and secure. Now, every single one of the rigs will use these items, although there will be a slight modification to the battery clip for when it comes to building the shoulder rig, but you'll see this a little bit later. So back to our rig, here's where we left off. The only trouble is I'm using a very heavy lens. This is the DSLO film 20 to 70 millimeter sign lens and it weighs 1100 grams, so 1.1 kilos. Now in order to lessen the strain on the camera mount, what I've decided to do is go for a rail system. You saw the base plate for it earlier. And that means that I can use a lens support to help support, as it happens, the end of the lens. This is the 2681. And as you can see, it fits on the 15mm rails. And that will just support the end of the lens to take a lot of that weight off of the camera. So first things first, let's put the lens onto the camera. So we'll click that on. As you can see, it's got a little bit of wobble. And that just shows how heavy that lens is. It's a real monster. On the screen, I've put details of the rod set I'm using. It has two 200mm long rods and two 300mm rods. For the sake of time, I'm going to be using the 300mm rods because it gives us a few more options. But if you're not going to do a shoulder rig, then the 200mm will probably just be enough for most lenses. Anyway, let's put the 300mm rods into the base plate. We'll slide it on. And at the back, I'm probably going to give about an inch or so. And then tighten it up. Now that we've got our rod set up, we can put the camera on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quick release plate on the bottom to push down this lever on the base plate, like so. And then I'm going to slide the camera back and you'll hear it click into place. From there, it's a simple case of just locking that in with that red lever from earlier. Now if you're going to use a follow focus, you can add this now. I've got the small rig follow focus, a manual one. 
which is a 3, 0, 1, 0. All you need to do is to mount it onto the left or right hand rail, whichever you want. I'm just going to slide it until it hits that focus wheel, which is the front one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my other hand underneath and support both the lens and that focus wheel whilst I tighten up the wing nut. And if we check, it should nicely spin. Now we can put the lens support on, which is a small rig 2681. So again, we just lean it back, slide it on, lock one nut into position. We want it quite close to the end where possible. And we'll lock the other one. And then we're going to push the support up until it hits the lens and just tighten it up with a thumb and index finger. Then it's a good idea to check you've got both sides of the support touching the lens, which I have, which means that everything is nice and square. And there's one final piece to add to make it a proper Lewis Lung rig. And that is, of course, a reference monitor. So what we've got here, we've got the small rig Magic Arm. This is the 2066. What I'm going to do is just open it out, like so, until it's straight, and then lock it back in. Then we're going to grab the small rig super clamp. This is 735. And we're going to mount it on top of one of the ends of the Magic Arm. You want to make sure it's on pretty tight. Uh, it's got a little rubber seal at the top to help give it some extra grip. And then on the other end, we're going to put on the reference monitor. This is the Switch CM55C. It has mounting options on one side and on the bottom. So I'm just going to put it on the bottom. And then if I spin the camera around, we can mount it to the rail. Where you mount it, it doesn't really matter um, unless you're going to put a that box on the front, in which case you might want to keep it further this way. What I like to do is just put it right behind the lens support and that means we have access to the zoom and the aperture ring. And we can undo it and just put it in whatever position we want. As this is a low slung rig, what I'm going to do is just put it sort of about there, just above the lens, like so. Then we can put the battery on the reference monitor I've gone from the Switch 8770. This is a 31 watt hour version of the other batteries we used. But actually this reference monitor can also take the internal battery from the camera, the LPE6. Anyway, let's chuck this on. I can hear it clicks nicely into place. And this just goes to show why it's so important to try and keep the number of manufacturers or brands down to minimum. So anything that requires powering, I try and use Switch components because those are the batteries that I've used. Unfortunately, Switz don't do the dual MPF battery plate, but hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll come out with one in the future. Anyway, that completes our nice low slung handheld rig. And of course, if you find that it's tipping forward, you can just adjust the position of the reference monitor. So it's leaning a little bit to the right. So what I'm going to do is just move it closer to the center. We'll lock that in, see how it feels now. Yeah, that's much better balance. So that's why I like this setup, because you can adjust it until you get the perfect weight distribution. So that's our first rig, but don't worry, because the rest of the rigs won't take long to make. So we'll move on to the dual side handles. So this is a really simple conversion. All we need to do is to undo the top handle, and I'm going to grab the other handle and mount it to the side. Now, because these holes here are offset and they're at different heights, you might need to adjust the position of the bracket so that they both match. So we'll start with the trickiest one, which is the left side one. Now this one's a lot further forward and it's a little bit lower. So what I'm going to do is actually just rotate this so that we've got the bracket bending this way and that should match this side a lot better. Tuck that in there. And then we can do the same on the other side. Turn this one round. This is what I mean about being able to rotate these until you get them roughly equal. That looks about right there. So we'll pop that in and just give it a little bit of a tighten. And of course, if this isn't comfy enough for you, we can rotate them. So let's drop them down. There we go. Now we can actually get it much closer to our chest. And that just helps us balance it even better. Or of course, we can have the handles pointing upwards. 
and that's another way of doing it. This is probably better if you're stood up, it's quite awkward like this sat down, but there we are. So that's different ways you can have your dual side handles. The third rig is the chest height rig. This is a very simple conversion. I'm going to grab my shoulder pad and what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount the rail block that comes with it onto the end. And then all we do is to pull it upside down and pull it onto the rail system. We'll tighten it up. That means I can actually press it hard up against my chest and it's still really comfy and it gives us a third point of contact. Now this is probably one of my favourite ways to shoot because it just allows you so much manoeuvrability and it's just a lot comfier. You don't have to hold that whole weight of a rig on your hands. Okay, now we have the shoulder rig. So we want to do the shoulder pad or chest pad on the back and we're repositioning this rail block onto the top. Then, you guessed it, we put it back on the camera. We'll do it up. Oh, we have to go the wrong way about them. And I'm going to remove these handles and I'm going to mount them onto the front rail. Now to mount them onto the rails at the front, we're going to need a couple of clamps. These are the small rig 842B. The B is really important because that is a version that has this mount system here, the 3 8 hole and the two locating holes. So again, you guessed it, we'll put in our reducer bushings again. Slot one in, and we'll put it in this one as well. Give them a quick tighten. And we can put the handles directly into these. You probably want to try and keep the brackets in the same direction. Uh, so that goes down. We just have little holes in the screw here. So I just stick in the little welding key and tighten it up. And then we can mount these onto a row. And this will help keep it stable and keep it from dipping over as well. So it has a dual use. So we just stick one in. We'll stick the other in. And then we just lift it up until we both sit about level. There's one. There's the other. The final part is to add the batteries onto the shoulder pad. And the reason we do that is to offset the weight of the lens and the camera and generally this very heavy rig. And this requires some slight modification to our battery setup here. All we need to do is to remove the belt clip on the back. make a lot of noise in the process and you can see that the clip is held on by two little screws so we use the small allen key and do the screws and then we can pull off the clip I mean to mount this plate onto the two small screws here now it's very important to have the widest part of the V-mount at the end of the shoulder rig. And that just means we can slide the battery plate on top. There you go, nice solid slide. And that's locked into place. Then we can wrap the cable around the rail. And plug it straight into the camera. And of course looking at my table, it's not until the very end that I realised that I've forgotten a piece. So we have the HDMI cable here. The reference monitor does come with a HDMI cable, but it's not coiled. As I said earlier, I prefer the coiled ones because it's much tidier and it also gives us a little bit more freedom. So this just plugs into the side of the camera and into the side of the reference monitor. And there we have it, that is our shoulder rig, and that completes all my rig setups. So that's about it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it and that perhaps you learnt something new or something interesting that you can put forward to your rig. 
If you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. Do you like the rigs? Are there things that you would do differently if you were building them? Do let me know either way. And of course, don't forget you can always tweet me at Studio Jamming. In the meantime, happy filming!